Well, with the possible exception of infectious diseases, uh, um, uh, there is really uh, uh, very few diseases that can be cured. Uh, and Parkinson's disease is only one of the diseases where a cure has not yet been found. Uh, that does not necessarily mean uh, that uh, Parkinson's disease is not a treatable disease. It clearly is a treatable disorder, uh, and we can uh, treat it in different ways. Uh, we can treat uh, the symptoms of Parkinson's disease, and uh, there are many medications that have been proven to be very effective and safe in the treatment of uh, symptoms of Parkinson's disease, uh, particularly uh, the dopaminergic drugs, drugs that um, um, stimulate the dopaminergic system. Levodopa is the best example. Uh, it replaces dopamine, which is the uh, neurotransmitter that is missing in the brains of patients with Parkinson's disease. Uh, then there are drugs, so-called dopamine agonists, uh, that stimulate the dopamine receptors. They can also uh, improve the symptoms of Parkinson's disease. So these are classic symptomatic therapies that we have for Parkinson's disease. Uh, then there are therapies that uh, uh, we hope uh, will favorably modify the progression of the disease, the so-called disease-modifying or neuroprotective drugs. Uh, I wish I could tell you that uh, we have neuroprotective drugs, uh, but there are certain medications that uh, we uh, have found uh, delay the progression of the disease and may, uh, in fact, uh, be disease-modifying drugs. Uh, these medications uh, include, for example, monoamine oxidase inhibitors, such as selagiline or rosagiline, um, it has been shown that early introduction uh, of these medications in the initial phase of uh, the disease may delay the uh, need for levodopa, which is the main medication that we use for Parkinson's disease. Um, our goal in the therapeutics of Parkinson's disease, of course, is to uh, develop uh, truly neuroprotective drugs, drugs that actually uh, uh, protect the dying neurons and uh, uh, protect uh, uh, the brains from uh, uh, developing the dopamine deficiency. It should be noted that even in early stages of Parkinson's disease, 70% uh, or 80% of the uh, dopamine uh, already is depleted. Uh, so in order to initiate neuroprotective therapy, it has to be initiated early on, uh, hopefully even before uh, uh, patients begin to uh, start losing these dopaminergic neurons. Um, one of uh, our initiatives uh, at uh, Baylor College of Medicine is to look for um, biomarkers that uh, may help us um, identify individuals who are at risk uh, for Parkinson's disease. Uh, we have um, developed, in fact, a new theory about uh, how Parkinson's disease may develop, and we think that in some cases, uh, Parkinson's disease may even start before the individual is born, and that uh, they are actually born with fewer dopaminergic neurons, and that as a result of age-related attrition, uh, uh, the surviving neurons continue to die, and the patient eventually uh, reaches a threshold at which time the dopamine uh, level is so low that they begin to develop uh, Parkinson's symptoms. So even though uh, the symptoms may start uh, when the patient is 40, 50 years old, um, the loss of the dopaminergic neurons may start many years uh, or decades prior to that, maybe even uh, at the time when the individual is born. And then finally, I should just mention another th form of therapy that uh, uh, is uh, very important in more advanced stages of Parkinson's disease. Uh, involves surgery, particularly deep brain stimulation, uh, and this is usually reserved for patients who respond to levodopa, but as a result of chronic levodopa therapy, have developed uh, side effects such as motor fluctuations and uh, involuntary jerking type movements, so-called dyskinesias.